Hello everyone, Crash Davis, RTA Motorsports. Today we're going to be doing just the first impressions of what I think about the Thrustmaster TS PC Racer. Welcome to RTA Motorsports. Now it's very important to note that during this process of my first impressions of what I think about this wheel, it's not a review. I'm still learning this wheel. I'm still going to learn the wheel for a little bit of time before I give my full review. As usual, I hope to make the review very detailed and through my experience, I'm just going to let you know where I came from in the Thrustmaster product line. My first wheel was a Thrustmaster T100 and as you know, that's only a 240 degrees of rotation. It was a very fun wheel and it's what kind of planted me into sim racing, obviously, as you can see here. My next wheel was a Thrustmaster TX. Now, unfortunately, the main board fried up on that. So I was either forced with the decision of buying another TX or buy the Thrustmaster TS PC Racer. And I went the way of the Thrustmaster TS PC Racer just to kind of get an idea of what the Thrustmaster line has to offer and hopefully kind of get an upgrade within the Thrustmaster line. So with that said, let's get going with the first impressions. So first I'm gonna tell you uh, the wheel that it comes with is the F1 or I like to call it a GT3 style rim because a lot of the GT3 cars, well, a lot of cars in general in the racing community are moving to this style rim. Now, um, I'm going to say that this rim here is actually really nice. I really like it. Some people say you could unscrew these, this plate here, flip it over so that way you don't have the Thrustmaster logo. You see back there, it's bare. So that way you don't have the Thrustmaster logo facing you, but I kind of like it. I really like it. Um, one of the things that I will note on my first impressions is now the smell has gone. <laughs> if you haven't seen my unboxing video, it's, it's a few videos back, it says, well, I think I renamed it as a Thrustmaster TSPC Racer. I did it live, it was a lot of fun. Uh, definitely take a look at that if you're kind of curious how it comes in the packaging. But the first thing that was to note when this was brand new was that the Alcantara grips smelled really strong, like um, it just like adhesive. Uh, it was basically a fabric adhesive, obviously, um, but it was really, really potent. As soon as I took it out and just gripping the wheel the few times that I did during the unboxing, my hands smelt like adhesive. So <laughs> as a first impressions, it is, uh, it's pretty potent smelling, so don't sniff your wheel. Um, the second thing I got was that it's a nice size. I really enjoy the size of it. You can see there, uh, it has kind of like a nice width to it. It doesn't feel like a toy. Um, as I was kind of expecting. And the next thing is that it has a nice brushed aluminum face. Um, it's not bare, it is painted. And then the, um, the paddles themselves are actually painted in the same gunmetal metallic paint that you will find on the top accent piece, the top metal piece of the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer body itself. So I was, like, I, I was liking how they actually continued that theme from the wheel to the base itself, kind of made it feel like all one unit. And uh, even though it's a piece that you don't really look at, um, you know, it's, it's just the paddle shifters, it was really nice that they had that nice attention to detail. The next thing that I'll notice, and it was kind of a common complaint that I had from some of my viewers that actually upgraded to this wheel, was that the buttons themselves very, felt very uh, cheap and plasticky compared to their normal buttons like you could find on this 599 um, wheel here. Now I will say that the button placement is very similar to most of their other wheels out there. You still have the Manatino switch here that uh, you know you could push down, push up, or push in. So it's basically like a three function switch. And then you have your buttons here, here, and here. Um, I do find the colors to be not tacky at all, but they're very vibrant, they're very bright. They, the one good thing behind that, just on my first impressions when I first used it, was when I wasn't racing in VR, which is rare, but when I wasn't racing in VR, um, you don't really have to look at the wheel to tell what you're pushing. Um, you can kind of just tell by the colors, you know, on your peripheral view, what you're hitting. Uh, and on top of that, just first impressions, the, the buttons are numbered and they're numbered to their corresponding button in the configurator. So that way when you map it, 
in some titles it will have that same number function so you don't have to guess like what was number 10 or what was number three binded to it's right here on the wheel now i did find in some titles it wasn't accurate um, even though i bound this key it wasn't labeled number four if hopefully you can see there um, but you know it does help with the situation in most titles and just all in all this wheel is probably one of my favorite wheels now i have not tried the thrustmaster f1 wheel a lot of people say they like that wheel better uh but um, i'm very impressed by this the buttons themselves they kind of have like a rubbery sort of texture to them so that way when you push them in they don't have the same um clicky sort of positive tactile feedback that you get from the normal standard Thrustmaster uh, button box on most of their other wheels. But the positive side to that is it's something different. They changed it up a little bit and it doesn't feel cheap to me. Some people said it did feel cheap, but that's just my first impressions of this wheel. Obviously very positive and very good. I do like how it is still soft and I do like the Alcantara. I really love Alcantara, especially in racing grips. It just brings it a little bit more to life because that's pretty much what they use in most racing wheels in real life. Now for the wheelbase itself, now I did kind of cover most of this in my unboxing video. Definitely refer to that if you want kind of a complete unboxing process and just to see what I thought as soon as I took it out of the box. But for my first impressions mounted to the rig, uh, it does have two bolts or two holes uh, that you could hard mount it to your rig. And I do find that once you hard mount it to the rig, it is solid. Uh, I didn't have any issues with um, threading issues or I didn't have any issues with the threads on the inside of the base kind of coming loose. Um, I do got to say that the whole wheelbase is very compact and coming from the Thrustmaster TX, uh, the base itself is narrower and that actually cleared up some more room for my handbrake that's right along the right side. Uh, it is a little bit taller than the Thrustmaster TX, but not by much and not anywhere that's going to bother most people. Uh, it's very compact. I was expecting it to be much larger. Uh, and the last thing is it's all metal in design. It feels like a really, really quality piece and it's heavy. So you're going to want to make sure that you don't really want to table mount this unless you actually have quite a substantial desk that you're going to put it on. Um, but this is a heavy wheelbase that really, really produces a lot of uh, force in its force feedback. So. Uh, from first impressions, just from the look and the construction of the wheelbase itself, it feels like high quality materials are used. It looks like high quality materials are used. Um, in its presentation, I would say it has more curb appeal than the Thrustmaster TX, which I wasn't expecting because really uh, in pictures and in videos, it didn't look like it was really that impressive in its design. But in person, I absolutely love it. And I think Thrustmaster hit it out of the ballpark. Uh, it's very understated, but at the same time looks very nice. So once I had it mounted to the rig, uh, the first thing that hit me was when the wheel is just off, there is quite a bit of weight in the wheelbase itself. It is quite a heavy wheelbase. Now this is with it not being active in a title at all. So, you know, once you actually go in a title, if you set the um, minimum force feedback to zero, the wheel actually gets pretty darn light. The other thing you're going to notice, it's pretty noisy. Hopefully you can hear that. And that gearing that you're hearing is actually felt in the wheelbase itself. A little bit more obvious with their F1 or GT3 style rim, um, as I call it. But in the 599XX Evo, you can kind of feel the cogging a little bit. Um, it Coming from a Thrustmaster TX, uh, just in this state right here, it doesn't feel as smooth. Um, it kind of feels like you could feel more gear. Let's put it that way. Uh, so we're gonna go into an actual um, driving experience and we're gonna kind of go over my first impressions while driving it. So here we go. Okay, so to demonstrate how we feel about this, uh, this wheel, just kind of first off, we're gonna use a setup course up. And we're using one of Assetto Course's newest vehicles on the Nordschleife. And first off, what you're going to notice is that the force feedback is much stronger 
than what was present coming from the Thrustmaster TX or T300. You're also going to notice that there's a lot of little vibrations coming through on the track. Um, now, when I was racing and I racing, I did notice that in linear mode, the wheel just feels kind of really heavy all the time. I haven't tried it out of linear mode because that's just kind of how I've always raced. But in linear mode, the wheel just feels heavy all the time and I think there's further testing with eye racing that needs to be done. And in setup course, it actually feels pretty good. Get a lot of little vibrations from the track coming through the wheel that I would experience with the TX and the T300. But I do gotta say, um, there is none of that cogging nature that I experience when the wheel is off and you're just turning the wheel. Uh, the wheel doesn't feel gear mesh at all. It feels a bit smoother than you would expect from when the wheel was off. Now, is it as smooth as a T300 or the TX? No. Uh, now, this is just coming from first impressions, and that's why I keep saying that, because it's not my full review. I believe there's more testing, more messing with the settings that need to happen before I can say definitely that's what's going on. But it's just out of the box. Force feedback is definitely manual, man, manlier feeling. Can't speak for some reason. <laughs> uh, I have also noticed that the weight of the steering wheel, um, because of the wheelbase, seems to have almost like an inherent dampening built in. Uh, I do have the dampener setting turned all the way off, as I always do in the profiler the control panel, but uh, the wheel still kind of feels heavy. Um, heavier than you would experience with the TX or the T300. And the one way I could describe it, ah, is almost like as if you um, were driving one of these newer cars and you could put it in sport mode and the steering wheel stiffens up. That's almost what it feels like. And the issue that I have with that, kind of just being heavy all the time, is that it's a little harder to feel little road bumps or certain little cues that you may be used to, unless you kind of kick up the force feedback to about 80 to 90 percent, which so far, I've been running with this wheel at 90% in the main control panel without any issues of overheating that I've noticed. So now I can feel those little cues that I look for, although now the force feedback is so strong that uh, under longer races, I, it could be quite fatiguing. So that's why I believe there's some more testing that needs to be done with this wheel in the studio to kind of get a handle on what would be a good setting for me. Um, I, I do feel like there is room for this wheel to grow. So just to recap, the initial things you're going to notice is first, the force feedback is just monstrous. If you don't race with headphones, the fan is really quiet. Doesn't seem to overheat as much. I don't notice any degradation of force feedback on long racing sessions so far. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily feel as smooth as the TX did. Doesn't feel as quick to turn in if you're looking for a really quick wheel, really snappy wheel. I don't think this is for you unless you turn the force feedback all the way down, which kind of ruins the point of it in my book.
And lastly, um, I don't think it's as smooth of a bass necessarily as a TX. From what I read about the T500, this is worlds better. And this is kind of its replacement in my eyes. So, I'm Crash, this is RTA Motorsports. I hope you enjoyed this first impressions of mine on the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer. We have a full review coming soon. I, like I said, I need more time with it. I need to test this further, try to really get the most out of it that I possibly can. We also have the Thrustmaster TMX Pro in the house. And we are going to do an unboxing and review of that coming up real soon. So definitely stay tuned for that. And that was provided by one of my good friends, Phantom, on the channel. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So, and we have a lot more content coming soon. So definitely subscribe. Hit that like button. Helps me out more than you know. And as usual, have a great day. See you all next time.